Hello everyone. Um, for those of you who don't know me, I'm Shanara Beavers. I work in the Banana Extension team. Today we'll be speaking to you about the suffering in tissue culture plants. Um, so I'll be talking about um, the importance of early de suffering in your plant crop of tissue culture and Nandita will be speaking to you about a new um, technique that's happening um, in the lab, in the tissue culture nurseries. I guess um, I'm talking about tissue culture today, but we're also interested to know what your experiences are. We, um, we speak to you quite regularly and we hear um, what the pros and cons are of um, using tissue culture material or um, bits and suckers. So we hear things such as, you know, tissue culture is clean, pest um, and disease free material. Um, it pro provides a synchronous crop. Um, you've got material that um, hits the ground running. But we also hear things like, um, Produces a lot of off types. Um, there's um, uh, uprooting in your in your first return crop. Um, the cost of tissue culture. So a whole range of different things, um, and managing suckers. So, um, does anyone want to share um, your experiences of why you use tissue culture or why you don't? Um, is there anything in particular that you wanted to share with us today? Or happy to talk later? Okay. Um, so I guess I also realise that some of you may have established um, your own on-farm nurseries for your planting material. Um, but I guess we just wanted to emphasise if you are using bits and suckers from your own farm or over other, um, from other farms, you are putting your farm at a risk of introducing unwanted pests and diseases such as banana weevil borer, nematodes, as well as um, Panama TR4. So from an industry standard and a biosecurity perspective, um, the use of tissue culture material is, um, is recommended um, and is best practice and should be used when establishing new blocks um, and um, a, new, a new farm as well. So why am I talking about tissue culture plants to you today? So managing tissue culture is different to bit material. Tissue culture produces more suckers and the suckers tend to sit lower down in the corn. Than, than your bits. The purpose of today is for you guys that do use tissue culture or if you're considering using tissue culture in the future, um, I'm going to speak to you about what you can do now to manage um, some of the challenges with tissue culture plants and that's including suckers. So I'm gonna be talking about managing suckers and the importance of getting in early and doing an additional early de-sucker in your plant crop only. So what can you do now to overcome issues with um, too many suckers in your plant crop? So we conducted a trial here at the research station um, which investigated whether plant agronomics was significantly improved by undertaking an additional early de-sucker in your new tissue culture plant crop. So it's a known fact that tissue culture produces more suckers in the plant crop. So the aim of this trial was to conduct two rounds of de-suckering in your plant crop and determine if that improves agronomics in your first return. So the trial here, it included 330 plants um, spread across three double rows. Um, and 50% of the plants in that block um, were treated with the early de treatment and the other 50% were treated with, I guess, a more conventional later de treatment, which was one de in the plant crop. So for the early de treatment, um, is that before bulling, you're talking about one and two? Yeah, the yep. so just before, um, or just on bunch emergence of some plants. So um, for the early bee suckering, which you can see here, oh, we'll just hand out some sheets as well if you don't mind handing them out. So I've got labelled one for the image. Um, if you just want to have a look with your neighbour at some of the handouts for the photos for a closer look. But um, for our early bee suckering, um, what we did is we removed, three months post planting, we removed um, the first flush of um, suckers um, three months post planting. So we went in and desuckered all of them to allow the second and the third flush to come up. So then with the early desuckering, we also conducted a second round of desuckering and that was closer to bell emergence where we then went in and took out um, all of the suckers but one, which was our following sucker, which we would use in our next return. With the late desuckering, we basically did one round of de-suckering. So that's when we went in, when we did the second de-suckering for our early, we went in and we took all the suckers but one and left the following sucker for our first return crop. So that was done 
um, much later. And there were a lot more suckers um, for that treatment. So research shows that when suckers are greater than 30 centimeters, so think of a, a 30 centimeter ruler, um, you may already be aware of this, but when suckers are greater than roughly 30 centimeters, that's when they're really starting to utilize nutrients and water from the mother plant. Um, and that, that can compromise your yield. So if you think about um, desuckering much later and removing all suckers at once, you're letting them continue to grow and they're ut utilizing those nutrients from the mother. So you might not see it in your plant crop as much, but in your first return and your following returns, that's where it could start to um, um, have an effect on your agronomics. So I guess another important fact is if, if you have other pest issues on your farm, such as nematodes or banana weevil borer, that can also exacerbate um, you know, a potential yield loss um, on top of it. All right, so on page two of your handout, we've just got some um, agronomic measurements that we had taken throughout the plant crop in the first return. So you can see here, um, we've got the effect of desucker treatment on the mean height of plants in the plant crop in our first return on the other side here. But for our late desuckering treatment, um, there was a significant difference between the two. So average plant height was about 2.45 metres in our plant crop, whereas in our um, of late desuckering, whereas the plants that were desuckered twice, we had a plant height of 2.55 um, metres on average. Um, but you could see the difference more so in our, in our first return crop. So the plants that received late desuckering had a plant height of approximately 2.7, whereas their early desuckered 2.94. And that could be, I guess, a benefit or a con, depending whether you prefer a, a bigger plant or a shorter plant. So um, we looked at crop cycles. So um, our crop cycle from our plant crop and our first return there wasn't a significant difference. So when, when I say significant difference, that's analyzing the data and making sure that it's um, got a, a statistical difference. This wasn't significant. So our late desuckered plants um, had a slightly longer crop cycle, but I'm sure you guys are aware um, a difference of a couple of weeks a month isn't really significant. So we had for our late desuckered plants, I think it was 96 weeks, the crop cycle for plant and first return. Whereas their early desuckered plants had a crop cycle of 91.6 weeks. So it wasn't that much of a difference for that. So we also um, measured in our plant crop and first return um, bunch weight uh, at harvest. So there were significant differences in our bunch weight between our two desuckered treatments. So our late desuckering in our plant crop, we had 20.16 kilos on average. Um, whereas in our early desuckered plants, we had an average of 21.19 kilos. Now that may not seem like a lot, but I guess <coughs> thinking about it, if you multiplied that out across your entire farm, that's where you would probably see um, a bigger difference um, and a benefit. But then when we look at our first return data and our bunch weight um, measurements, that's where we really started to see a different in, difference in the agronomics between the two desuckered treatments. So our late desuckering treatment, we had 19.68 on average. Um, and our early desuckered plants, we had 25 kilo um, on average bunches. Um, but keeping in mind with this trial, so it may not seem like big bun bigger bunches, but we did have other treatments, but it was all consistent. So we had different ground cover treatments as well. So, but looking at our early and late desuckered, there was an agronomic difference between the two treatments. So what we had also done is, so we had taken our agronomic measurements where we looked at bunch weight, um, number of hands in the bunches, number of um, medium, large, XL, jumbo hands to see if there were differences. But what we had also done is we had done something similar to this, but this is for some of the research that Nandit is doing. But we um, we had leftover tissue culture plants and we thought we'll, we'll, um, we'll plant them at the end of the double row and we'll apply the desuffering treatment to them as well. And we applied the early desuckering, and then we didn't desucker um, the plant, the other plant, which we left as a more conventional um, desuckering treatment, and we dug that up. And then we looked at the sucker connection um, of these plants. So what we found is by removing the first flush, you have a stronger connection um, in your second and third flush of suckers coming through. So you can see here in this image, our first flush suckers, the connection was 
roughly a 10 cent piece. Um, not really that large or, or strong connections, but looking at the second and the third, we had a, a much bigger connection and a much stronger connection. So by removing that first flush of suckers initially, you're allowing a stronger plant to come through um, for your future returns. And that's just another um, image of the different suckers. So you had a, a smaller connection in your first flush, your second and third. The third was slightly bigger, um, but yeah, it, it just shows that by removing that first flush, you're getting a stronger um, sucker in your, ne your next crop. And so this is um, another image of, of our dig. Um, so yeah, you can see in this image here on page nine. So that's, that's our plant that we applied the early desuffering and we were just about ready to do our next um, second desuffer. Um, and that's, that's the view that you can see similar to these plants. Um, but yeah, it, the, the plants were, had a strong, we pulled them apart. They had a stronger connection and um, fewer suckers as well. So compared to our late desuffering. So we had um, more suckers um, and it was for, for us when we were looking at um, the plants above ground after cleaning them up, it was still difficult to determine and make judgment which one was a first, second or third flush. So you can imagine without digging them and looking at them above ground, when you have a lot of suckers, it, it could be quite difficult to, to, to determine which one is the most suitable. It might look great above ground, but you don't really know what's happening underground. And I guess another, um, point to emphasize is when when you do have a lot of suckers coming up and you're applying that one desuffer treatment um, in your plant crop by removing all of the suckers at once and leaving your one following that can also cause uprooting problems in your first return because you've you're taking a lot of suckers away from that mother plant and causing it to maybe not be as stable in the ground and soil moving around it so that's and then if you have other issues like the nematodes and the banana weevil borer it just exacerbates it even further so that's some of the agronomic results from the trial um, and I guess I just wanted to summarize it um, before we move on to Nandita's talk. Um, as a grower you want to get the best out of your tissue culture planting material and for just one extra de-sucker in your plant crop only, you don't do that in your first return um, crop, you will get a better plant, better vigor, um, improved yield um, in both crop cycles. So the timeliness of desuffering in your plant crop of tissue culture is key if you're using tissue culture already on your farm. Um, it's not only reduces the competition of suckers with the mother plant, but it's also <coughs> assisting with sucker selection in your future return. If you wait until it gets closer to bunching when you do your first desucker, removing all those suckers all at once can destabilize your plant. Can destabilize your plant and lead to uprooting issues in your future returns. And I guess lastly I don't want to touch on biosecurity too much um, but today you're here to take a look at some of the research that's happening here in the department and you'll soon be moving over to the variety um, station with Jeff Daniels and I guess um, you're looking at a whole range of different varieties, Cavendish and non-Cavendish varieties with varying levels of resistance to Panama disease. We've spoken about the pros and cons of tissue culture. However, tissue culture does have a lot of reasons um, as to why it will be important in the future, especially in the variety space and if um, Panama TR4 continues to spread throughout the region. Um, if we find a new variety, and Stuart and Jeff have mentioned this previously, um, if we find a new variety with improved ag agronomics and resistance to TR4, tissue culture planting material will be the only way to rapidly get clean, disease and pest free material um, on farm and into your farms. So I guess, yeah, it's, I just wanted to finish on, um, you know, if you are using tissue culture, it's really important to get that early desucker in approximately three months post planting. Um, and yeah, if, if you're, I'll, I'll be interested to know if you're already doing this, if you do use <coughs> tissue culture, if if you're already doing additional desuffering, or if you do anything else, we'd be interested to know what, what you do in that space. So please let us know. And Shinara, it's just the plant crop you're talking about. Yeah. The early desuffering. The yeah. Crop. So just the plant crop, one additional desucker. So, yeah. <coughs> so does anyone have any questions? Yeah. Yep. Yeah, Shinara, what was your desuffering method? Um, cut and caro. Cut and caro. Yeah. Yep. So cut and caro. Um, we did consider doing other techniques, but yeah. 
cut, cut and carry and industry standards. So um, we did that in the plant crop and we also did that in the return crop. So when we went to our first return, we just de-suckered as, as standard practice. So, yeah. But, yeah. Anyone have any other questions? Uh, why or? wouldn't you do it in the first return? Like, why is it changing the first return scenario? Like, once they get bigger than 30 centimetres, is that something <coughs> that could be, like, is beneficial to keep doing it under 30 centimetre sucker height? Yeah, um, definitely. As, as suckers are growing, um, they're, they're taking nutrients from, from the mother plant, so I guess it's important to keep on de-suckering regardless. But I guess it's really key in your plant crop if you are using tissue culture because that's when you're getting a lot of suckers coming up um, in those early stages of development quite quickly. So, yeah. Anything else? No?